Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Friday. Super stoked for this weekend. I'm uh, going to be watching that Browns game tomorrow early at 1.30. And, um, you know, I may just tell everybody where I'm going to be. Like, if you guys want to come hang out, come hang out. Let's do it. Let's do a beautiful thing. All right, let me start off uh, today a little bit differently than I normally do. Um, yesterday, look what I received. Yeah, my Kaplan and Crew hoodie that is available for you right now on kaplanandcrew.com. I even put out a post today on my story on Instagram. Alex, I don't know if you can pull this up for everybody, but it's pretty simple. If you go to our website, kaplanandcrew.com, and you click on our merch shop, you'll be able to find these Kaplan and Crew hoodies. And the comments have already been, you know, everybody's just sending me the little fire emojis. Dude, I love this hoodie. This thing is awesome. So whether you want the coffee mug, you want the ball cap, the t-shirt, the hoodie in a variety of different colors, come on out and get it. Because I'll tell you this right now, I'm talking to Captain Troy about our boat trip, which by the way, I may have to actually push off a little bit further. I don't know that Dece uh, January 27th is going to be the right date, but neither here nor there. We're going to do it. Uh, when you come on the boat trip that day, I want everybody to be rocking stuff, rocking gear, repping. You know what I'm saying? So check us out on kaplanandcrew.com. All right, let me also thank our great, great partners. I'll start off with our people from 7 Mile Casino, 7milecasino.com. This weekend, you're thinking to yourself, where am I going to go watch the games? Well, I'm going to give you a suggestion. 7 Mile Casino is only seven minutes south of downtown San Diego. The beautiful Bay of Chula Vista, smoke-free environment, amazing food, great brunch on Saturday and Sunday at Sammy's Restaurant and Bar, blackjack, poker, table games, TVs everywhere. You're a winner at 7 Mile Casino, 7milecasino.com. You have any problems with gambling, you call 1-800-GAMBLER. Now, speaking of gambling, prize picks. Alex, I'm going to tell you something right now. We're going to talk about this as the show goes on. Whose dog is that? I don't know. But I'm going to tell you something right now. Mm. We're going to talk about this during the day. I'm already in on the prize picks Friday promotions that they've, they've sent to me today. And I opted in and I'm starting to think to myself, where am I going? Because this, this Kansas city Miami game is going to be crazy because it's going to be one of the coldest games in the history of the NFL. So how will the weather impact that game? And how am I going to think about it with my prize picks? We'll get to all of that as the show goes on prizepicks.com slash great friends. If you've not made your first deposit yet, today's the day you put in a hundred bucks. They match your hundred bucks. You're playing with 200 bucks. They will match your first deposit hundred percent up to a hundred dollars. Do it today. Prizepicks.com slash great friends. For those of you that have not yet done it right here, right there, there, the QR code, do it. Okay. Um, let's get to the show. I'll mention a few more of our great partners a little bit later on during the halftime. It's Friday. Let's start. Hey, great friends. It's the first one of 2024, at least for me. At least for me. It's Friday. Oh, it's Friday. And by the way, um, it's Friday with the NFL playoffs kicking off manana, Jack. So this is going to be a great show. This is going to be a great weekend. And by the time we get to Monday, uh, who knows what will have happened in the NFL playoffs. So stick around. We got a lot to get to. We are coming to you today from the Seven Mile Casino Studios, sevenmilecasino.com. This is Kaplan and Crew with Grande and the Brown Man. To all of our radio listeners on 1090, by the way, anytime somebody comes up to me in a public place and tells me that they still listen on the radio, man, do I appreciate that. Because I, I, I don't know if I told you guys this story, Grande, Brown Man. Um, when I was driving to Mammoth, this is um, New Year's Day, and it's it's nighttime. This is like nine o'clock at night, and I stopped at this little gas station in this tiny little town called Adelanto, and I'm walking out Adelitas? of Adelitas, not Adelitas, oh, Adel Adelanto, bro, and uh -huh. and I'm walking out of this little convenience store. Um, and this father and his kids were in front of me and the dad like held the door and I said, Hey, thank you very much. And he turned around and he looked at me and he said, are you Scott from the radio? And I said, uh, yeah. 
and he's like, mm -hmm. bro, I watch you guys every day on YouTube. So now it's freezing. It's windy. He got his kids, Rachel sitting in the car. Me and my man start hugging it out right there in the parking lot of this gas station. I come back to the car. She goes, what the hell was that? I said, I don't know. Some great friend who watches the show every day on YouTube. So my point is, is that anybody who listens on radio, like last night I was at the Belly Up seeing one of my favorite bands who I'm kind of watching on their way up, a band called Daring Greatly. Last night, this gentleman comes up to me and goes, yo, man, how you doing? Listen every day on the radio. Appreciate you. I'm like, appreciate you. So if you're listening on radio, you're watching on YouTube, you catch us on TV, audio podcast, however you're getting the show, man, we appreciate you guys. It's Friday afternoon. It's Kaplan and crew. And we're ready to rock and roll. Boys, how are we doing today, man? I'm very good. <laughs> as I burp, as yeah, I wasn't ready right. for you to come my way. Yeah, I'm good. I'm very yeah. good. Very not, solid. Golden. Not, not as good as me and Browner. Brown, uh, do I see you wearing the same Kaplan and crew hoodie that I'm rocking? I can't really see uh, to see the logo on your hood. Oh, damn. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's that. right. Independent, living, doing our thing, not held down by the man. Yeah. I mean, yeah. technically, Scott is the man. No, I'm not the man. So I'm like, I'm like half a man. No, I wouldn't say that. But well, my girlfriend asked me today. She said, um, I'm gonna have to well, hire I hope she's a... not saying you half a man. Well, she told me today, she goes, you know, I'm gonna have to hire a handyman to come oh, and install God. come uh, on, bro. Like like smoke detectors at my house. And I went. I, I, I think I I think I'm not positive, but mm. I think I'm man enough to install mm. these new smoke detectors because, you know, one of the gifts I got her for Christmas was I got her a new shower head. The shower head at my girlfriend's house hurts like a mother effer. It just <laughs> it, it's it's got like and she's had it for 20 years. And for her, it's just normal. And like the, the sh it just now the shower head in my house, which I'm telling you is like a forty five dollar shower head off Amazon. It's awesome. It feels great. So I bought her the same shower head that I have at my house. I think I can do it. I'm I'm not 100% certain I can install it, but I think I can. And then, come on, I can install fire alarms, can I? I mean, you just, you plug them in, you screw them on. How hard could it be? Listen, let me tell you something, okay? When you are going to be the man and you're going to repair something with these hands, for a woman, make sure you get it right, dog. I know you YouTube that thing a couple times so yeah. you don't have to go in and look it up. Go right. in like you know what you're doing. Now, yeah. if you got the type of relationship with it, you can look it up and y'all can look it up together, then mm -hmm. do that. But mm -hmm. if you're going in there, you know, what I'm saying you're gonna put your man hammer down so you because you're gonna fix some stuff. Yep, you know what I'm saying? I do, I do. No, because here's the thing. Um, I think have you guys ever heard of this, uh, this like theory? called like love languages have you ever heard about this oh i hate that i hate that stupid book you know you may hate it i've not read it, it a, it's a book i think yes, so it's a book I think so. yes mm -hmm. and i you could probably google it real quick alex I, there's like five six seven different love languages i don't i've not read the book but i've heard her mention it to me enough times to know oh. that one of her love languages oh, a man wrote this what are of you course guys, he did what are you guys talking about let me tell you something man is this, this is this is an important thing for, for, hey, listen, Alex, this is an important thing for a young brother like yourself to know, especially true. a In young a marriage, brother who, yes. who's married, right? It's true. You need to know this stuff. One of my girlfriends, what I think are her love languages is I think it's called acts of service. You, I can't really see what you're showing me there. Acts um, of service. It, it's physical touch, acts of service, gift giving, quality time and words of affirmation i almost okay. know this offhand by the way oh, okay so pathetic. so so for my girlfriend <laughs> for my girlfriend i would say acts of service is up there uh, if you put it back up on the screen acts of service are up there um quality time is up there i don't think gift giving necessarily is a big deal for her um words of affirmation are nice physical touch is great whatever what do you now wait a second hold on alex you're oh look at him See, Alex, Alex, uh, is, now, Alex is looking at Mar. Alex is looking at Mar right now. And he's at, go ahead, go ahead. I got a delivery. I got a delivery. Oh, no, I was like, I was trying to show what her like you what who? we were talking about. Yes. Yeah, um, I didn't know you. No, it's a Yerba. It's a Yerba. Um, What's that? It's like energy drink, but like natural. So oh. It's not like mm -hmm. Red Bull. 
Mm-hmm. It's like a tea, but cold. Mm-hmm. Yeah, delicious. Nice. By the way, tons of caffeine. Your, how, what would you say Mars' love language is? I mean, if you had to go in the order of those five, ask her. She right there. Yeah, ask her. What's oh, your love language? I'm sure she read the book. I'm sure she read. Listen, she's gone. The, la- the, uh, the, the words of the affirmation last... for sure. Words okay. of affirmation. Mm-hmm. Quality time. The last. Well, mm-hmm. let me see. The last probably last five women I've been with. God, they read that book two times over. <laughs> Man, listen, I hate that book, bro. I'm not a book burner, but I would burn that book. Don't quick. burn. Don't burn books, man. It's bad. I would never burn books, but if I had to pick a book to burn, yeah, that's, that's number one. one on my list, brother. That's, that's one, number huh? one. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Well, anyway, um, yeah, man, love language. I, I'm very familiar, but I was surprised that a that a dude wrote it. But yeah. that's all. Yeah. Well, anyway, all I'm saying is this. I think I think I'm man enough to install new. I, hey, I took the smoke detector detectors off. I took them down. I unplugged these rascals. So if I could take them off and take them down and unplug them, I think I could plug them back in and screw them back on. Wait, wait, wait. I, when did you take them down? Uh, about a week or so ago. Because you know that you, you know still that I haven't done it. Oh, man. Well, no, we had to order new ones. Mm, we they had to come? order new ones. Yeah, they're here. Okay, because I was about to say, if you took it down about a week ago, and then you didn't yourself go about the task of putting yeah. them back up, right? That's that is what they call. So not I'm good. in a I'm always in this predicament because my mother in law, this is kind of what she's learned to do with her life mm. is to like uh, remodel homes, do things on their own, you know. So when like my house was flooding, mm-hmm. and my mother in law happened to be in town, she's like. Oh, I could put the drywall up for you. And I was like, what? <laughs> I think, what are you talking about? You could put the, like, look at my kitchen. There is no kitchen. You know, it's like wood. That's it. And so every time my mother in law is here, she's like, oh, I could do that. I could do that. And I don't care about feeling, was it emasculated at all? Like, I don't yeah, care about that whatsoever. Yeah. It doesn't bother yes. me at all mm-hmm. that my mother in law can do it and I can't. Mm-hmm. But what does put me in a predicament is that my wife has interest in learning to do all these things and mm-hmm. I have zero interest in it. No, let her zero. learn. Let her learn. No, let her so do like it. right now we hate our chandelier. We've always hated it since we moved in. It's too low. Yeah. I we know. don't like it. It's mm-hmm. like glass and it like shakes every time the neighbors move. We hate it. And she's like, we can do this. And I was like, first of all, we don't do that. You maybe me don't do it. I support the local economy. I'll call my boy to come do it because that's what I, I am fortunate enough to be able to do so. But she's like, oh, no, we could do it. I was like, dude, we don't even, first of all, we don't have a drill. Mm-hmm. First of all, I'm assuming any sort of construction, that's like step number one, screwdriver yes. and drill. Right. Yes. Yeah. Drill, not screwdriver. Like, we can do it. We can do it. Drill. We can do it. The best man at my wedding, who both of you have met many times, he randomly sends me a video last night. Look what I did. Change the chandelier. So now wow. I feel pressure. Yeah, now, now I feel can, pressure. Let him come do it. Mm. And I told him, I was like, well, why don't you drive your ass down from North County and you and Mark can tag team that thing because yeah. I'll I'll go buy pizza and I'll bring the beer. But you know something? You talk about being emasculated. My, so let me tell you another, since we're talking about being man enough to fix stuff. So for Christmas, I got Rachel a treadmill that she can walk on and work on at the same time. So it's not like a big, heavy, hardcore running sort of treadmill. She sits at her desk all day and then her back hurts. So she's like, yeah. I get up during the day and I take meetings and I'm walking. She's like, what would what I need is I need one of these treadmills that has like a desk connected to it. I can be on my computer and I can be walking and moving. My right? wife has one. Okay. So I bought one. Walking I bought, treadmill. Yeah. I bought one off Amazon, right? I get this treadmill. I take it upstairs to her, her room where she wants it. I put it together, very little, you know, just an Allen wrench, no big deal, right? I put it together, plug it in, turn it on. Computer says error. I'm like, oh no. So now I I Google it. I'm like, what's going on? They tell me that it's probably the wire that's this, that, right? So I've been going back and forth with this company on Amazon. And first they said to me, how about this? Um, Because I'm like, dude, send me a new one. It doesn't work, right? They're yeah, like, yeah. yeah, here's yeah. what they told me. They go, well, you need to open it up and you need to see the wire and there could be a short in the wire, blah, blah, blah. I go, yeah, but you don't get it. I bought the treadmill. I turned it on. I expected it to work. Don't tell me that I have to open it up, find the wire, blah, blah, blah. Right. So they send me this message. They go, how about this? We'll send you $20 back from what the cost of the <laughs> machine. Okay. You fix it. And we'll send you the wire and you fix it. I said, no, <clears throat> I said, I don't have the time. 
Browner, I broke it or, out on him. Or, or Browner, uh, you you or, hit him with the hit him with the B word. I hit him with the bandwidth. I told him I don't have the time. I don't have the bandwidth. I don't have the capabilities. I don't have the tools. Right, all this stuff. Then they hit me back. They go, "How about this? How about we'll give you fifty dollars and we'll send you the new wire and we'll send you instructions? How about that?" I go, "No." I go, "Send me a new one that works, man." You know. So then they write me back. How about we'll send you hundred and fifty dollars and we'll oh, send you the new wire. Talking. And I'm like, you know, no, I'm like, it's pissing me off, but this thing's big and it's heavy and the box is already destructed. So like, they don't want to come get it. They don't want it. Right. Exactly. So finally, ultimately, here's what I said to him. I said, all right, you know what? I'll tell you what, because my girlfriend said this, she goes, well, my friend, he could probably come over and fix it. And I'm like, wait a second. Hold on a second here. This was a treadmill that I got for you that it doesn't work. It bothers me. I want it to work. So I finally said to the company, I go, I'll tell you what, tough guy. I'll take your $150 offer. They've already refunded. And your wire. Right. I'll take your $150 offer. Send me the wire. Send me instructions. And let's see if I can pull this off. But if I can't, I'm sending this thing back to you and I want my money back. So now, not only am I going to try and put in the fire alarms, not only am I going to try and change the shower head, now I'm going to be a man. And I'm going to, I'm acts of service here, buddy. Acts of service. And I'm going to try and change Forced the action. cable yeah. on the treadmill. I'm going to get that treadmill yeah. working. So because I'm selfish and I only care about myself, mm-hmm. now I see really? why you don't have bandwidth for us. Because Rachel's taking all the extra. Well, but again, this is my <laughs> point. My point is acts of service. Now you have to understand. So now I have to actually commit the time to, to sit down and do this. Like I'm worried about this shower head thing. Because her shower head That's the easiest been, thing in the world. Dude. I know, that but you know what, dude? But that world. shower head's been on that shower for 20 years. If I unscrew this thing, right. you know, and now if it's been know, on there for 20 years, you're showering with dirty water at that you're point. Gonna some, really, you're gonna need some caulking if, tape, by the way. If you yeah. genuinely now nah, you don't. That's a myth. You don't really yeah, need yeah, it. You know, that white tape that goes Plumber's again. Tape. If it's if it's been there for 20 years, like yeah. It's gonna be hard to, if it's I'm been too- there for 20 years. Like, even that's one of the things that I don't know when I started, but I was like, every three years, I switch out a shower head. I don't know, okay, why. Well, I just, you, it's been a thing for me. I need to do the same thing in my house, also, because yeah. I can see that the, the shower head's getting like this white sort of residue, you know. Yeah. But I'm gonna do that. There was browner. a TikTok with the dude had these little, like, um, little tiny brushes. I don't even know what they're really used for, yeah. But this TikTok where he went into his shower head, the removable ones with the, mm-hmm. with the long rope or whatever, yeah, and he like plucked each little thing yeah. right uh-huh. so he like and then he turned the water on yeah and it was like chocolate milk coming out it was disgusting oh so i think that oh, has like emphasized how much i 20 years bro you're showering with rusty dirty i don't know water. dude she's got like a water purification water softening the it's whole about thing the shower the head it's, it's not about the shower head though. Okay. yeah dogs listen to me i'm gonna do this here's what i'm gonna do dogs I'm gonna, I'm I need gonna, you to film yourself doing this i'm gonna go to Please. dixie line i'm gonna i'm gonna go to dixie line because it's on the mm-hmm. way I'm going to get some of this plumbing tape stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take her shower head off. I'm going to wrap this, this plumbing tape around the thing so that it doesn't leak. Then I'm going to mm-hmm. install the you have shower a wrench. head. I, no, I got it all. I got the tools, man. Okay. I got the okay. tools. Like a real okay. man. I got tools. Unlike you. Okay. All right. You got the tools, but right. you got the tools. Right. To I know. I, right. I got the right. tools, but do I have what it takes? You right. Know I, the hardest thing it is going to be for you to fix this weekend. Is gonna be that treadmill. Well, I haven't gotten the pieces yet, so that treadmill, I'm a, I'm a week away from doing that. Because because the, the, there's certain screws, like there are these micro screws, like that you use to fix phones. Mm. Those suck. No, I'm not using the screws. That. Are, the screws are so small. No, I'm not doing that. But have you opened the treadmill up? I to have. Find out? I have. I have opened it. <laughs> okay. And I've okay. seen the wire. And let me tell you what pisses me off about this. When they is when I extra when stuff I, that you when I looked need. at the wire. I could tell that that they may have already refurbished it. So I'm like, yo, I bought a brand new treadmill and you got like a refurbished well, you wire you there. Did. And it's like some Japanese company too, because like they sent me an email this morning. They're like, well, hey, it's the weekend over here. And I'm like, not yet here oh, yeah. in America, Jack. So anyway, all right. Yeah, listen, I'm never I buying did, anything refurbished on Amazon. It was never, again, it, but ever. it wasn't, t- I never buy it refurbished. I thought I was oh. buying it brand new. The, the one thing about Amazon, if you order something big enough, they don't want it back. That's right. They That's don't right. want it back. Right. They're like, well, you got one. too much stuff. And I you know the best thing it. about, I don't know if you guys have ever done this, the best thing about, see, when you order something from like Nike, just as an example, it's so hard to return something online. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. It's so hard because you got to go print your own label yeah, and then you're yeah. going to lose X amount of money. But Amazon, yeah, whenever they started allowing us to return stuff to Kohl's, they don't even it want is it. the oh, yeah. best, dude. Oh, yeah. It is oh, no. the no doubt. best. My, you know what my daughter said to me? She goes, I have to go return something to Amazon. She goes, but Kohl's is going to be closed on Monday. I go, why would Kohl's be closed on Monday? She goes, well, it's a holiday. I said, listen to me. Yeah. Kohl's is not closed on Martin Luther King Day. Okay. Christmas. Are you sure? I know I'm not sure, but, but I'm like, come on. I mean, the like company, bro. the post that office is closed. The stock market may be closed. The bank may be closed. You know, you go Kohl's, to Google. garbage you go delivery to Google. may not happen, but come on. Kohl's, Kohl's on is, Balboa. Kohl's is not. Monday. Hours might differ. Martin Luther King Day. Hey, listen, if they are closed, good for them. Mm-hmm. Good for them. Not this show. Hey, I wanted to take the day off on Monday, but Browner demanded that we work. Mm-hmm. Joe did. Representation said, matters. Said, in honor of Martin Luther King, That's we right. work all up in this biatch. Mm-hmm. I tell folks all the time, Martin Luther King gave his life for equality. Yeah, I'm not, now going to take the day off when I'm equal. That's right. Hey, so let me just start Can off I? by... No, you cannot. You are not allowed. Cesar Chavez. Oh, Cesar Chavez fought no, too. No, Cesar He literally Chavez. fought for workers' rights. I can't now take off. Well, wait, that is a right to take a holiday off. Cesar Chavez would be ashamed of you and, and this whole notion of, of not being willing to even try to change what? the chandelier. He'd be ashamed. Why? Because I'm That's helping. I'm helping. I'm literally helping people, like supporting the lo- the, the, the market, you know? Like I'm, I'm helping small business be a man and change the change the chandelier all right like man. browner like man. browner changed the carburetor in his car on youtube okay Listen, bro, I, I fixed everything with my hands baby yeah. one way or the other all right what's all great right, is i actually in this whole process this year or last mm-hmm. year i found handymen it's, it's amazing yeah handymen it's amazing are good. they're good guys to have they're handy mm-hmm. you know what i'm mm-hmm. saying yeah. Uh, all right. Let me let me give you guys a little something I, I want to talk about today. Obviously, a lot of NFL playoffs, I mean, lots of NFL playoffs. And by the way, how about the New England Patriots yesterday? They part ways with Bill Belichick and immediately hire his replacement, who was one of his draft choices, one of his players, one of his captains, one of his assistant coaches. And Browner, you talk about representation. Um, immediately the New England Patriots hired an assistant mm-hmm. coach off the staff and the first black head coach in New England Patriots history. So um, you talk about representation. I got to give it up to Robert Kraft because he made a swift decision. Bill Belichick is older. Bill Belichick has lost this locker room. We've got a younger guy who played for our team, who is get, being given a lot of credit by the players for the improvement on the New England defense. And we're hiring this young black coach. So we're going to talk about that coming up. And I also want to tell you guys, I mentioned to you Dan Quinn, the uh, defensive coordinator of the Cowboys, wanting the Charger job. Wait till you hear what happened when Dan Quinn heard us talking about him. I'll explain that story coming up in a minute. And I spoke to Pete Carroll this morning. Whoa. And I'll, yes, Whoa. yes, journalism. journalism Name drop. Capital C. This is journalism. why people yell at you, man, because sometimes you do do journalistic journal stuff. Yeah. I'm sometimes the journalism gets journalism. You, yeah. You. And sometimes the journalist has to go handyman. All right. Sure. All right. We'll get to all of this coming up. We're just getting rolling. It's Friday afternoon. For those of you that are listening, going, come on, let's talk some NFL playoffs. We started off talking about man stuff. Mm-hmm. All right. Man yeah. stuff all yeah. up in it. Um, we are in the seven mile casino studios. If you're thinking about where am I watching these games over the weekend, come to seven mile casino, blackjack, Poker, table games, incredible food, great brunch on Saturday and Sunday at Sammy's Restaurant and Bar. Seven minutes south of downtown San Diego in a completely smoke-free environment. You're going to love it, and you're going to win at Seven Mile Casino. Just getting going. Let's do it next. Hey, great friends. What's going on? It's Friday afternoon. It's Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios, sevenmilecasino.com. And um, I started today's broadcast by saying how much I appreciate it when people tell us that they still listen to the show on radio because so many people actually are part of the show during YouTube uh, and, and they get involved in the live YouTube chat. And by the way, you know, we're getting real close now, finally, to 8,000 subscribers on YouTube. And, of course, my goal 
and it's only January, is to get us to 10,000 subscribers this year. So for everybody that's listening on radio, for everybody that's watching on TV, make sure you come over to our YouTube channel and subscribe because the goal is to get to 10,000 subscribers this year. But when I mention radio, guys, do you recall earlier in the week I told the story that I heard from a gentleman who is close friends with Cowboys defensive coordinator Dan Quinn, and Dan Quinn wants the Chargers head coaching job. By the way, this was before Pete Carroll left the Seahawks. And there's a relationship between Dan Quinn, Pete, the Seahawks organization, et cetera. So maybe the Seahawks is the better place for him. I'm not really sure. But this gentleman called me and he said, hey, listen, do you know anybody at the Chargers that you could call to endorse or at least let them know Dan Quinn really wants this Charger job? And I said to this, this gentleman, I said, brother, I am persona non grata at the Chargers. Dean Spanos hates me. Susie Spanos hates me. John Spanos hates me. A.G. Spanos hates me. I think the only person that really loves me in the Spanos family is the sister who's suing them all. And by the way, you talk about a conflict. My daughter is waiting to hear from colleges. And one of the colleges that she really likes that I'd really like to see her go to is Cal Poly Slow. Dude, the Spanos name is all over that campus. Mm. The stadium um, and, and like theater buildings. I mean, the Spanos name is all over that campus. I should probably shut my mouth because maybe they'll make sure she can't get in. I don't know. Anyway, here's the story. Um, you guys will love this. I'm, I'm reading an email to you. You guys all come on the screen here. So this is from the gentleman who uh, was trying to get me to get Dan's name onto the radar of Chargers ownership. And of course, I had to tell him they hate my guts. He writes me an email yesterday. He says, um, hey, Scott, I was driving home from work yesterday and caught the Kaplan and Cruz show and the timing couldn't have been better as your opinion of Dan's desire to coach the Chargers was hilarious and spot on. So here's what this guy did. did. He says, quote, I, I'm reading directly. I actually FaceTimed Dan Quinn and his brother last night and shared your comments and discussion on your YouTube channel. Ultimately, Dan feels the Chargers are the most fixable team in the league. They're just too soft. That's the word he uses all the time when discussing the Chargers. They're too soft. He said, that being said, Dan Quinn really appreciates you just getting his name out there. And now he has four interviews in the next several days. And that's before the Seattle opening, which is probably the best fit. And he loves the organization. But, but, you know, Southern California is closer to his offseason home in Hawaii. Dan Quinn wanted me to thank you for blabbing about him. He got a huh. real laugh regarding your relationship with the Chargers once you explained it to him. <laughs> Great show as usual. Thanks. And the next tequila shot is on me. So uh, thank you to uh, one of our great friends, listeners. I won't say names on the air, but I'll just tell you this, brother. It could be related to Hulk Hogan. I'll leave it at that. I'll leave it at that. What is that Hulk beeping Hogan's sound? About. What is that beeping sound in the background? What is that? I don't know. I don't know. I hear it, though. I know. Me too. I hear it. I don't know what it is. Could it be? Hear. Yeah. All right. Anyway, um, so interestingly, um, Dan Quinn wants to become the head coach of the Chargers, although his buddy says that maybe now that the Seahawks job is open, maybe that's the best job for him. I sent Pete Carroll a text this morning. And I said to Pete, I said, Pete, I just wanted to wait for the dust to settle before I reached out to you. And I told Pete, how much I love him and how much um, influence he's had in my life that he doesn't even know about. And I sent him um, a note and I said, I, and I, the same story I told you guys the other day, when I was standing there on the field with Pete several years ago, we were having this conversation. I said, Pete, is it any coincidence that everybody around you is 20 years younger than you? And he said to me, brother, if you want to keep up with me, you better be 20 years younger than me. And of course, when I heard that, I immediately instituted that in my life. And pretty much everybody around me is now like younger than I am. And I kind of feel the same way. Like if you want to keep up, if you can handle the grind, you better be younger and you better have a lot of energy. 
So I send this to Pete and I send him a picture of the two of us on a field before a game. And he wrote back to me telling me how much he appreciates me and blah, blah, blah. And then he told me, he said, next time you see Billy Ray, give him a jab in the ribs for me. And so, <laughs> which, which I'm planning on doing because Rachel and I are having dinner with Billy Ray and Kimberly uh, Wednesday of this upcoming week. So nice. I'm definitely going to give Billy Ray a big old jab in the ribs and tell him that's from Pete Carroll right there, my man. So, mm -hmm. all right. All right. Uh, you guys got plans this weekend for uh, watching. Wait, hold on. I'm not done with Pete Carroll. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So he was on Seattle radio today. Okay. And I don't know. Was that it? Was that you just ex exchanged pleasantries? Just no, you back didn't... and forth. You know, right. I didn't say to him, coach, are you planning on coaching? Are you planning, right. you know, are you, would you contemplate the chargers because of your LA cred? I, mm. it wasn't like that. It was very much just a personal, right. I love you. And, and then he wrote back to me how much he appreciates me, blah, blah, mm. blah. So you said, I love you. He said, I know. <laughs> cool, bro. I, I know cool. it, it, it was, it was kind of one of those things, you know, like if you're a dude and you're with a chick and you're like, I love you. And she's like, um, thanks. Okay. <laughs> um, you're mm -hmm. a nice person. You're really mm -hmm. wonderful. I really right. dig you too. Yeah. It was kind of one of those weird moments where I told Pete Carroll, I love him. And he wrote mm -hmm. back, well, I appreciate you. So mm -hmm. love from me to him, appreciation from him to me. You feel me? Yeah. 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 So he was asked on Seattle radio today, is he, if he wants to coach and he says, quote, I don't know. I've got plenty of energy for it and thought and willingness, but I can't imagine that there's a place that's the right one. I don't know. I'm open to everything, but I'm not holding my breath on that. A buddy of mine yesterday mm. hit me up with a text and he said, what about Pete Carroll to Alabama? And I said, brother, listen. What? I said, listen to me. I said, Pete Carroll's 72 years old. Nick Saban was 71 years old. You think Pete Carroll wants to replace Nick Saban at Alabama? You think Pete Carroll wants to go back to the world of college football and, and have to deal with all of the things that Nick Saban didn't want to deal with, which is why Nick Saban ultimately decided to retire from, from coaching college yeah. football? That is like the dumbest idea. Now, what I said to him was, the same friend, I said, how about Coach Prime at Alabama? Because imagine if Coach Prime went to Alabama, and the recruiting that he could do there, uh, I think Coach Prime would be a great fit. And you know what this guy said to me? Nah, I, I think Coach Prime needs a little bit more experience. I'm like, experience? The New England Patriots just hired Jared Mayo, who's been a position coach with the New England Patriots. He played for the Patriots his entire career. He's coached for the Patriots his entire career. He doesn't have any experience from anywhere else. And you think Jared Mayo is more qualified to coach the New England Patriots than Coach Prime is to coach Alabama? The problem with Coach Prime coaching Alabama would be that he's got his two sons at Colorado, and they got, I guess, one more year to play. So unless Coach Prime plans on taking his kids from Colorado down to Alabama, the timing is probably not right for Coach Prime. But I'll tell you this right now. How about you have your kids grow up and not be under your wing? Oh, well, dude, this is you know, this is daddy <laughs> ball at the highest level. I know. It's like, it's like, dude, how about you just like leave the nest, man? Jeez. You well, go be, well, a, listen, no. be a first round draft quarterback pick. Then won't you go play somewhere else? I got to follow daddy around. Come on now. First of all, let, let me, let, listen, listen, listen. You don't know any. You don't know this. And so I won't give you the fire because you're not aware. But what they're doing is more about uh, what it's like, what black fathers mean to their sons. That's what that's more about than following around daddy. I hear what you're saying 100% nepotism. I hear you. No, what, I'm just talking about how about you be a grown up? How about you go be a, a, a real, if you're going to be a real NFL quarterback, like, do you need to follow your dad around? Like, that just looks kind of weak if that's the reason. If that's the reason, I'm just saying. Well, what do well, you I saying, have Browner? to follow? I don't, I'm not sure I understand right. what you're saying, Browner. So what I'm saying is the reason why what Dion is doing with his son is so popular amongst the black community, because oftentimes at this height that Dion Sanders is at, you don't see black fathers in the lives of their children or you don't see their children present. That's why Bron gets so much credit for what he's doing with Bronny and his hopes to play with him in the NBA on the same team, because black fathers often aren't portrayed in their kids' lives in a positive manner. And so the reason why that is such a story and why it's put out there so much, they're doing commercials together and things of that nature, is they're doing it for representation reasons, to show that there it is possible, then there are positive images of black fathers 
out in the public. Oh, I didn't know that. See, I, I had a different perception also. I thought LeBron James was um, like putting himself and Bronny on a sports card um, or doing commercials or whatever is because, hey, look, um, Bronny may not really be an NBA player. And if I can help him grow his own personal wealth rather than me just stroking him checks, um, he can get paid off of my fame, which is now his fame, and he can become his own independent wealthy dude. I mean, look, LeBron James could very easily just, you know, be giving his kids money all the time. I'm sure he is. But what I mean is, is that, hey, now he's got a card with his kid. He's got commercials with his kid. By the way, USC was playing Gonzaga last night in college basketball, as best I recall. I was cut. Why? I, I don't know. Yeah. You have to check me on that just to make sure I I'm right. I thought Gonzaga lost to somebody else last night. Or maybe it, that was may, women's. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe maybe you, you'd have to fact check me on this. But I, I could have sworn for a second I saw that. But listen, I could be wrong because I was watching the Lakers last night get blown out, their doors blown off by the Suns. And then it got so bad and so ugly in that game. I was like, why am I watching this? USC and so I bailed. Washington State. Yeah, uh, that's what I thought it was. Yeah. All right, so check me. I, I made a mistake. So, so what is who? Played? Um, definitely not Gonzaga. It's all conference now, so I don't know. Okay. So I don't know why I saw him. my maybe only was, point. Maybe which door? My only point. Which door is mm -hmm. is like Browner? You're always the and what you're saying. I have no exposure to that. Whatever. Like if that's the case, great. What I'm right. saying as as an NFL quarterback, what are you always saying? Do it somewhere else. One hundred percent. So I have to follow my dad to Jackson State. I have to follow my dad to Colorado, and now I have to follow him if he leaves again. So, what if you're NFL personnel? Wouldn't you ask the same question? Like, can he be successful without his dad around? Of course. Right, that's would all act, I'm saying. But, so, okay, like so when here's, Scott but here's says, but here's what all I'm saying is this. I'm not trying to okay. like make it a whole big thing. All I'm saying is this: if you are really truly looking at your future, and if your dad goes to Alabama. First of all, go with him if you can, because Alabama, obviously. But awesome. like, do I really need to follow my dad again? Have I not established myself as one of the premier quarterbacks in college Dude, football you're already? Not staying, you're not staying in Colorado to play for some other coach. I'm not saying stay at Colorado, but I'm saying do I have to follow my dad? Or can I go to Washington? Can I go to Ohio State? Can I go okay, wherever so else let, and no, do my own thing? Oh, okay, let, let me, let me, let me approach can't. it to you this way. If you had the opportunity – to play at Colorado or at Alabama at quarterback, which one would you choose? Or if you yeah, had Alabama. the opportunity to play at Washington or Alabama at quarterback, which one would you choose? Well, the, so at another level, level no brainer. At Washington. another level, if if you had a chance to go to Washington and play for a coach that you were coach, <laughs> well, but wait a second. Let's say you go to Washington, but you're not really truly guaranteed you're the starter. With with dad as the coach, you're guaranteed as the starter because your dad. It, you are what that's your dad of, needs you to be on the field. Exactly, that's kind of exactly that's what, what he's saying. saying. From an NFL yeah, right. perspective, it's like, so you're only successful because you're with your dad. Well, I don't know if I'd call it successful because you're with your dad, but why would you, at this stage of the game, why would you yeah. leave? Okay, well, let me ask you a question then, sir. All I'm saying is sir. that. Alex, do you yeah. believe the same thing about Caleb Williams? What? That he's only successful because he follows Lincoln Riley everywhere. It's possible. That's all I'm saying. By the way, I just looked it up. So, yes, USC played uh, Washington State last night in college basketball. Washington State won 72-64. to I've been following Boogie Ellis because he's a San Diego kid. Um, wow. Last night, he's been their leading scorer. Last night, he had 18 points. I'm only mentioning it. DJ Rodman, <clears throat> Rodman's kid last night, um, he had eight points. And LeBron's son, Bronny James, last night, 15 minutes in the game, 0 for 3 from the field. 0 for 1 from three-point range, and just a box score and a line that's just zeros all the way across the board. So for LeBron to tell everybody that Bronny could be playing for the Lakers right now, either A, he's delusional about how good his son is, or B, he's just taking shots at everybody on the Lakers because of how bad they are, which I kind of think it's probably yeah. how bad the uh, Lakers are. Also, side note, that whole Dion to Florida State thing, it's probably not. In the cards anymore. Florida State or Alabama? What are you talking about? Florida State. Okay. Remember, everybody's always going to leave Colorado eventually, go to Florida State. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They just gave Mike Norvell an eight year deal, paying him over nothing. $10 million per season. You know, wow. college football. Listen, the only thing worse than a college, an NFL contract is a college head coach contract. Yeah. But I think, I think that Dion should probably get over Florida State and should think to himself, um, 
what's better than Colorado, but maybe I'm going to have to stick it to my alma mater because those guys just did not give him any love of any kind. And I, and I don't, and I don't really understand people thinking that Dion's not now qualified to be the head coach at Alabama as an example or Florida state for that matter. If you're Dion Sanders, stay where the hell you at, man. Stay, there ain't nothing. How about you build something before Mike Krzyzewski went to Duke? What was it? Nothing. Mm -hmm. Now it's a national, now it's a global powerhouse for basketball. Stay where you at, man. Also, you're, you're one of the those... thing. You're the currency, bro. You going to another school, is it going to raise your profile? You're going to raise their profile with all but probably like three schools. One of the things I hate when people bring up like, oh, does this guy go here? It's like, oh, does his culture fit? Does that style of, Stop you it. know what fits? Winning. That's mm. it. That fits anywhere. How That's about recruiting? It. How about, how about yeah. by the way, how about bringing your brand? You know, yeah. I mean, remember, Dion is to Colorado what LeBron is to the Lakers. Yes. Right? I mean, he is a brand and yes. he increases their brand. And if if Dion went to Alabama, he'd do the same thing for them. If he did it for Florida State. Um, anyway. Yeah, it's like, you know, imagine how many of those preppy polo shirt wearing mushroom haircut white boys in Alabama be rocking in blenders in the stands all game, man. Well, if be you're sold winning, you're, you be if sold you're winning, you're winning. Hours. If you're winning, you're winning, and that's all that cares about. You know and when it goes stale? When you don't win. At Colorado, he's already got the number one transfer class, and I think he's got a top 20 recruiting class. So, yeah. like, it's it's going to work. Say where you at. And if you're if you're Colorado, you pay him everything you can to keep what him there. Whatever. Because, because Colorado is, A, a very, very expensive school for kids to go to, and, B, a very attractive school. Where I, I'm, I don't know this as a fact, but I'll bet you that their applications this year are probably up 30 or 40% than they've ever been because all of a sudden Colorado is a much more attractive place to go because of the excitement around Coach Prime. Now, there was a breakdown about what Nick Saban did for the University of Alabama and just how his what he brought to the to the football program spread out through the entire campus and mm -hmm. it's like legitimately here it is right here. Uh in 2007 they had 25,000 students. They're now up to over 40,000, 60% jump. Um Students pay three times more in annual tuition than they did in 2007. That might be just cost of living, but uh, they only paid him $130 million. And he said that they he brought in just from tuition at least a billion dollars in the wow. increase pay of for attendance. Wow. Pay How about for that? All right, let me do this. Um, got a lot to get to. And, and, and as we pull into the, the latter part of today's broadcast, um, I really want to get into uh, all the NFL playoff games because – you know, we've talked all week about how Detroit hosting the Rams is this juicy storyline of Matthew Stafford versus Jared Goff. Um, yesterday, there was a, a piece that was written about how Sean McVay has said, you know, he didn't handle the Jared Goff situation very well, um, et cetera. So that, that's kind of been a primary story, mostly because there's a you know local angle, the Rams being up the road. Um, but now I really want to talk today um, about something that, Dr. Chow brought up yesterday uh, about the health of the Miami Dolphins versus the health of the Kansas City Chiefs, but then throw on top of all of that, that this Chiefs-Dolphins game, which I know has been a big national controversy this week, talking about it's only on Peacock, how can people see it? Look, if you're in Kansas City or Miami, it's going to be on local television. If you're in our situation, I'm not sure how we're supposed to watch this if we don't have Peacock. And I was thinking to myself, if I owned a sports bar, I guess I got to get a Peacock subscription because yeah, I got to show this game on, uh, is it Sunday? Is the game on Sunday or is it nope, tomorrow night? Oh, it is tomorrow night because not only is there crazy, crazy weather between Kansas city and Miami, there is talk of a massive monster snowstorm between Buffalo and Pittsburgh. So I want to get yeah. to all of these stories coming up in just a matter of moments. We'll get there in just a second. Um, before we do a uh, quick shout out to us, if you go to our website, kaplanandcrew.com, you can now get the new, what Browner said, we are the death row records of sports talk. Totally independent. The man doesn't tell us what to do. No program directors telling us what we can and can't talk about. You know, just, just us making our own decisions, the three of us. So if you go to kaplanandcrew.com, the website, 
These nice hoodies that Browner and I are rocking today, Fat Tony came up with this logo. You can get the hoodies. You can get the ball caps. You can get the T-shirts. Oh, Browner, we gots to get that fanny pack, yo. I thought you gave the Fando game up. Well, I did. I, and it's sitting over here, and it's got all my crap in it. But now I just, like like last night I went out, just took my wallet with me. I'm done. I I can't take the fanny pack anymore, man, because I, I lost it, you know, anyway. All right, listen, stick around. Let's go deep into NFL playoffs next. All right, great friends. A little, little halftime time out here. Okay, um, start off with this. So, Grande, I was impressed this morning when you sent me a text and you said, my man, you got some AG1 for me or what? And my answer was, I do. Today is day five of my Athletic Greens 30-day challenge. Athleticgreens.com slash Kaplan. Use that website, athleticgreens.com slash Kaplan, and buy your subscription. It'll cost you less than a cup of coffee every day. Listen, um, what do you get with Athletic Greens? All the vitamins, minerals, nutrients, probiotics, superfoods, all the stuff you should be getting with your food, but you're probably like me. You're not watching your diet perfectly. You're not training for some bodybuilding competition or an Ironman. So, dude, get your vitamins and minerals and nutrients, everything else right here. You take one packet, you put it in the bottle, 12 ounces of water, you slug it down, it tastes great, and you're going to get everything right there in that one packet. Now, what are the benefits? I always tell people, it's the energy, it's the clarity, it's the I don't need a nap in the middle of the day, I don't need a cup of coffee in the middle of the day. So, Grande, you told me you had, what, two or three packets left, and you're kind of getting into that desperation mode now, aren't you? Yeah. We want more, need don't it. you? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. right. I got you. Ready. I got you. All right. Um, I can't get everybody, but I want you to do it yourself. Athleticgreens.com slash Kaplan. Let's all get healthy in 2024, especially the beginning of the year. Let's set the tone. Athleticgreens.com slash Kaplan. Hey, big shout out to my guy, Gary Cooper, Mountain Trust Realty Services. It's the weekend, right? Now, I realize there's a lot of NFL football games coming up, and that might occupy your time. But if you're thinking about buying a house and you're going to go onto Gary's website, mountaintrustrealty.com, or click the QR code right here, dude, you can buy a house. If you're paying three grand a month in rent, and you go, what am I doing? You go, well, I don't have the money for a down payment. That's what's killing me. That's what's keeping me from home ownership. That's what's ki killing me from, from creating wealth, from, from creating equity. Talk to Gary. There are programs for you where you don't need a lot of money for a down payment. Talk to Gary. 858-376-1299. 858-376-1299 for Gary Cooper, Mountain Trust Realty Services. And uh, hey, one more time. Yo. If you're a great friend, don't you have to have one of these? Once Browner declared that we are the death row records of sports talk, don't you got to have one of these? This hoodie is so soft, so comfy, feels so good, so warm, especially while it's freezing balls outside. Get it. Kaplanandcrew.com. Kaplanandcrew.com. Back to the show. Hey, great friends. What's going on? It's Friday afternoon. This is Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man. We are coming to you from the 7 Mile Casino Studios, 7milecasino.com. And for those of you that are watching on YouTube or on television, Alex can put the QR code up on the screen and you can click on that QR code on your phone. It'll take you right to 7milecasino.com and you can learn all about the casino, which by the way, is a great place to watch the games, have a ter terrific brunch on Saturday and Sunday. Great meal at Sammy's Restaurant and Bar. Nice stiff drink right there. And blackjack poker table games. You're going to have a great time at 7 Mile Casino, 7milecasino.com. And if you have any problems with gambling, you call 1-800-GAMBLER. All right, fellas. So let's start really going into the NFL playoff weekend now. Um, I received a promotional email this morning from Prize Picks. I'm sure you guys got the same email where you got to opt in to um, whatever sort of promotion is being run today. And I, I wish I knew what it was called because I – Flex Friday. Oh, Flex, Flex Friday. Friday. I, the reason I say I don't know what it's called because I already clicked into it. So I already opted into it. So every time I open the app, it's not giving it to me again. Guys, I have $57 left in my prize picks account plus $10 Ooh. in promotional money. I'm trying to load up – on the first game on Saturday, which kicks off at 1.30 between the doing. Browns and the Texans. Yeah, I'm going to try and load up in that game, and then hopefully I, I score 
and I have enough money or more money to play as the weekend goes on. Are you doing demons and goblins? That's what I'm doing. Well, I'm starting off with, um, and Alex, you could actually put this up on the screen. I know one of our listeners the other day recommended this. And, and then when we did it, he got back to me. He's like, wow, that was super helpful. Thank you very much. Browner, if I look at the NFL section on prize picks and I look at their popular plays, Joe Flacco, 272 and a half passing yards. Um, David Njoku, Cleveland's mm. tight end, 57 and a half passing yards, receiving yards. Those seem like automatics to me. Um, Amari Cooper, last time they played, Amari Cooper, 76 and a half receiving yards is his more or less number. Last time he had like 260 yards receiving. Um, Matthew Stafford, 275 and a half passing yards. He's going to Detroit. I suspect a game like that turns into a shootout. Um, but I look at Patrick Mahomes, 249 and a half passing yards. I just can't see Mahomes having a big passing day, given what the numbers in terms of the temperature and the wind. Yeah, I would are say that be. would be more of a concern than anything for me on, on these two games, the Buffalo game and the Kansas City game. The temperature in the Kansas City game scares me off of everything. And the particular in the weather and the in the Buffalo Miami game scares me off of everything in there because it everything is unpredictable. Everything. Yeah. yeah. So um I'm looking at Flacco, for example. Now, what concerns me is that Flacco didn't play the final week, and I'm just a little worried about some rust. I am. Bro, Flacco didn't play. He was on the couch. What do you mean, rust? I know, but but like <laughs> for me, I would have like I would have played him last week. I know you don't want to take the chance of getting him hurt, and I can appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And I look at what the Steelers did last week, and they played their guys because they were trying to play their way in. And TJ Watt, their best defensive player, maybe the best defensive player or one of the top three, four defensive players in the league. He he's out now because of an injury, Alex. So you got Flacco there on Prize Picks. You uh, I, I I like Flacco for two seventy two, and I like Injoku for fifty seven and a half. And frankly, I think I like Amari Cooper to go more than seventy six and a half. Mm -mm. No, see for me, yeah, the sneaky me. pick for me is Injoku because since since Joe Flacco has showed up, Injoku. For the last, let me see, this is five games against the Jaguars, six catches, 91 yards, two touchdowns. Against the Bears, 10 catches, 104 yards, uh, one touchdown. But against the Texans, six catches, 44 yards, one mm -hmm. touchdown. Mm -hmm. And then against the Jets, the last game of the season, six, six catches, 134 yards, no touchdowns, but he did have a fumble. So he appears to have found something with Joe Flacco, with the exception of the Texans game. So will he bounce back against the Texans? Or will he give you what it appeared to be just an Njoku game as long as he has Joe Flacco? So that's the mystery. That's the mystery for me. And I'm going touchdowns. I'm I'm doing touchdowns with Njoku more than I'm doing uh, yards. These are my two picks right here on the screen. Uh, I guess they're <clears throat> goblin picks, but I don't care about the payout. I just want the win. Mm -hmm. Kyron, any uh, rushing or receiving touchdown? More. Jalen Hurts, r rushing or receiving touchdown? rushing or receiving touchdown more that's the only way the eagles score now is the tush push yeah yeah so i'm looking at this uh this buffalo game if i took flacco and joku and amari cooper and i get three for three um they'll give me two and a half my dog two and a half times it's a twenty dollar play for, for a hundred bucks yeah listen to what you're saying yeah say it again flacco and joku uh -huh. and amari cooper you're banking mm-hmm on your Browns, yep, for everybody to go off. Well, I mean, but think about That's it. Everybody, he means but, this. Well, but yeah. but listen, I mean, I'm saying I'm not. I'm if you are that. I mean, this you've been rolling with the Browns all year. Yeah, right. Why Don't stop, stop now? now? Right, but in Joku, fifty-seven and a half yards receiving. I think he's going to go more than that. Okay. Um, and and Amari Cooper, I don't think he's going to have two hundred and sixty yards receiving this game, but I think he could have more <laughs> than seventy-six and a half. Okay. You know, and Flacco between the two of them, that's only like 130 passing yards. He needs another 140 to other dudes. So, I mean, three. If I go three for three, they they give you five times your money. A twenty dollar play turns into a hundred dollars. Sometimes I feel like we don't listen to ourselves as we're talking. Okay, tell me, because you just said Amari's going to have 76 and a half, and Joku's going to have 50 whatever and a half, 
and that's only 130. And you're like, and Flacco still needs 140 more with other right. dudes. Right, he does. But why would you go more on Flacco then? Should because, he go less on Flacco? Well, the last time Flacco and – well, you see, is probably the smarter play is to go less because mm-hmm. last time they played, um, Flacco passed for like 350 yards in that game. Right. And, and most of it went to Amari Cooper. So I don't think Amari Cooper is going to have 100-plus yards. And I don't know that Flacco is going to go anywhere near 300, but 272. I mean, if 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 the if the Browns are going to win this game, they need a big game out of Flacco. They need Flacco. Oh, to I do don't what think so. Doing. No, no. I think this is this. They could win a game by playing defense that they've been playing all year long, mm-hmm. and giving the ball to Jerome Ford and Kareem Hunt over and over and over and control the clock. I could see that too. It's not the way they've won, mm-hmm. but it's a, against this particular team. I do think that they could win that way. What were the two plays that you had, and where did where do I find those two? You had Jalen Hurts to score a touchdown, and you had Kyron Williams to score a touchdown. Where are those two plays? Are those are those in rushing yards? Russian or, reception touchdowns. Russian. Okay, got it. Yeah. Okay, and these are there. There are demons and goblins here in in mm-hmm. prize picks. Okay, mm-hmm. so like Njoku is um is at point five for a touchdown. Like he's just got to score a touchdown. Kareem Hunt has to score a touchdown. Wow, this is. But you have to be have mm. to be careful when you're doing the touchdown bets because they won't let you make some of them. Because I guess I can't. I got like a warning three different times, and I try to mm-hmm. do uh, more than one touchdown bet. So be careful. Okay. Pay attention. All right, I'm trying to. Kyron Williams, here he is, right here. All right. Um, wow. Okay. Damn. I'm looking at I'm looking at a twenty dollar play right now to win 180 bucks. See, Browner, I'm trying to go all in. You know, I'm trying to go for something big. I got a I got a big I got a big five pick, uh, twenty bucks flex play, Dalton Schultz for a touchdown rushing and receiving, Joe Flacco for more than a touchdown and a half, Nico Collins for more than ninety nine point five yards receiving, David and Joku for more than seventy nine and a half yards receiving, and CJ Stroud for more than two hundred and seventy four and a half yards passing. Mm-hmm. So that's where I'm at. Uh, the only one I'm really worried about is the CJ Stroud passing yards. Because I, I I absolutely love the Browns defense, but the Browns don't play well on the road somehow magically. Because when I looked into these this situation this year on the road, they've been suspect. At home, they've been damn near unbeatable. So I don't I don't know what what the correlation is. So I don't really know how to approach that from a a, a defensive standpoint. Mm-hmm. But that makes me feel like. There's going to be a place that you can't plan on where they have a letdown on the road, which they've done all season, apparently. So let me just tell you guys, if you have not yet made a deposit into an account at prize picks, they will still match your first deposit 100 percent up to 100 dollars. So if you put in 100 bucks, you'll have 200 dollars to play with this weekend. If you put in 50 bucks, you'll have 100 dollars to play with this weekend. So if you've not yet gotten into the game with prize picks, this is the weekend to do it prizepicks.com slash great friends, prizepicks.com slash great friends. Or for those of you watching, use the QR code. It'll take you right to our page on prize picks, prizepicks.com slash great friends. So, you know, as I'm trying to make my plays, I'll, I'll say this in terms of um, not on prize picks, but in terms of just actually betting the, the game itself, I think the number one game where I'm going to load up the most is Kansas city to cover over Miami. And and all of it is based on and I and I'm I'm nervous about it, but I feel like um Kansas City is a four and a half point favorite at home. You're home and this is going to be this is going to be the craziest weather game that we've seen in the NFL in a really really long time. And and the Buffalo Pittsburgh game is also going to be crazy because right there's <laughs> there, there's supposed to be some monster snowstorm but the snow is what I worry more about than the cold. The cold you can the cold as a football player, you can you can you, you can run the ball if it's cold. If it's snowing, you can't really do anything because you can't plant your feet. But if I'm if, listen, I put a lot into this. I know a lot of other people do not. If I play in Miami and I play mm. in a in a primarily warm weather uh, I buy into this, by the way. I buy into this too. If I play in a primarily warm weather climate, and I practice in a warm weather climate, 
and I, and I, I've gotten accustomed. I live my life in a warm weather climate. I don't get my car with boots and jackets and turn on the heat <laughs> and have to defrost my car and have to, you know, scrape my windshield. Like in Kansas city, you have to live in the cold in Miami. You don't. And so if you put that graphic back up on the screen one more time, Alex, this Miami Kansas city game, it's Saturday night. The predicted temperature at kickoff is going to be minus eight. Mm. Wind chill of minus 30, 25 mile an hour wind gusts, and forecast to be the mm -hmm. coldest game in the history of the Dolphins franchise. And Tua being from Hawaii, playing at Alabama, and now his career in Miami is 0 4 in games under 45 degrees. I All of those numbers tell me I'm loading up to can on Kansas City to cover the four and a half. And Miami is coming in ridiculously hurt on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah. They're coming in banged up on the offensive side of the ball. So it's just like every, it, it almost scares me how confident I am in Kansas City. It's one of those games that makes so much sense that you start questioning, like, is one plus one equals two? You know, like if someone tells you like that you're wrong, even though you know you're so right, mm -hmm. don't you start questioning it? That's where I'm at with this game. I'm like, it's so obvious that the Chiefs will win. The Chiefs will cover and they'll advance, but at the same time, is it so obvious? Because like everyone's saying it's so obvious. Well, For me, the scariest part of that game is the Miami injuries because if the only problem with the Chiefs has been their their inability for their receivers to you know, catch hold ball to the ball, right? Now the Colts going to play a large part in that, but with their secondary banged up, I think this will be an easier opportunity for them to catch the ball, and if they do that. You know, I believe what Scott is saying more than people ever want to admit. If you basically get in your car after practice every day with flip-flops, and you find yourself in minus eight degree weather for more than 10 seconds, you tapping out. Dude, because you know, even mm. on the Chiefs side, though, Rasheed Weiss, I just looked it up. Rasheed Rice went to SMU. Mm -hmm. Kadarius Tony went to Florida. These dudes aren't cold weather guys either. I but they live there. But they that, live that's there. The but live right? there and play there is very different. Listen, I want to tell you something that that it is going to be hard for the Chiefs too. Yeah. Okay. But yes, there's yes. but there but there's a there's a game in Chargers history, one of the coldest games, maybe the coldest game in the history of the NFL. I oh, second right? coldest. Okay, so the Chargers are playing the Bengals in Cincinnati in one of the coldest games in the history of the NFL, minus nine with the wind chill, minus fifty nine. And the Chargers, who were probably the better team that year, and if the game were played indoors, the Chargers probably would have blown the Bengals out. But instead, they lost 27-7. to To me, the week before, wasn't that the Kellen Winslow dehydration game in Miami? I If you put the, the, the graphic back up on the screen, because I want to say the Kellen Winslow dehydrate. Yes, 1982. That's right. That's right. I, Hank Bauer always talks about that, how they right. had to go from – one extreme right to the ridiculous the other extreme yeah yeah, yeah. and it, that's it, just it, it. Be... miami's going from the, the extreme of i live in south florida i play in south florida it's it's you know tropical warm humid etc and i'm not saying like it's 85 degrees and sunny every day in, in miami right. right now okay but to get on a bad. plane to get on a plane to land in kansas city because you know there there will be some dolphin players who come out for the pregame with no shirts on to show oh, Tyree how tough i am Tyreek Hill talking about that. I have the video. Oh, Here's really? Tyreek. Yeah. If you believe it's going to be cold, then you're going to freeze your balls off. But if you go into this game, like, not even thinking about any of that, you'll be fine. And um, with me being me, I played there, and um, I understand the conditions. I'm, I'm not even worried about it at all. So I'm going to go out there with no sleeves and, you know, just tell the rest of the guys, hey, look, man, it's a mindset. If those guys see you wearing sleeves, obviously they're going to think you soft. Yeah. Hey, man, that's not, hey, bro, that sounds good. That sounds good. If so you're you out there. The other 52 dudes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tyreek, you might be cool because you've done this before. These other dudes, the other 52, nah, yeah. 30 of them tapping oh, out. Worry about Tua. Worry about Tua. My who also, by the way, he's going to be tapping out too. Them little you know who I'm worried about? Nah, you know who nah. I'm worried about? Mike McDaniel. He weighs about 120 pounds. He he's not running up. around. He'll be standing there frozen. In ha like you can snap in half. You know who I'm worried about? The long snapper. Like, what are you doing all the, the sideline all game? And you have Everybody a big here? job. 
thin yeah. body heater. You know who I'm worried about? What if, what if Tua taps out and Mike White's frozen on the sideline? What are you, you know, going to do then? Is, it, Those are, I'm worried about the guys that don't quick. play. The guys that just got to stand there. For me, this is why all the games, if you if your stadium is above the Sun Belt or below the uh, – uh, if your stadium is above the Sun Belt, you should have an indoor stadium. That should be a rule. Oh, really? That should be a rule, oh, man. Oh, Browner. Be- Browner, don't because get me started. You, I hate these games. I hate these they're games. So they're so stupid. They're the worst. These are some of the greatest athletes participating – in sport, they're the 0.01 percentile of human bodies. And now we're going to put them out here in this weather where you can't see them perform at well, their peak condition. There's well, a reason the Super Bowl is never in a cold place. Well, well it has it. been. It, it has did been. it once. I mean, and, it was in New, York. in New York. Yeah. And in Indianapolis, it was it's indoors. Indoor, you know, and, and, and Minnesota you know. was indoors. Right. Listen, let me tell you something. I, I, you guys just gave me New Orleans, Vegas, Los Angeles. Yeah. It's all you just gave me a good idea, though. You just gave me a good idea. I'm going to go now. I'm going to go into the kickers in this, um, in the Kansas City Miami game and the Pittsburgh Buffalo game. And I'm going to probably play less than because, How, because like in the you, Cleveland, is, Houston is there a game, penalties more or less? Because I feel like the ooh. refs are going to be frozen too cold to be calling anything. No flags, no flags, no flags because the whistle might throw you over. Hey Scott, when you kick a football yeah. at that temperature, yeah, how how much harder is oh, it? Oh, dude, it is honestly. Let, put it this way: if you were playing in Houston and you could indoors kick a sixty-yard field goal, but then if you were going to go to Kansas City and it's balls cold, like we looked at the forecast, not only are you playing on a natural surface, which changes factors, but also. The ball is so much harder. This is why the whole deflate gate mm. thing from years ago with Brady, that's why they wanted the ball to be a little softer. You know, the ball will go from I can kick 65 yarders inside in Houston to I can kick 40 yarders in, mm. in, in the pregame in Kansas City. And then think about this. Think about two hours later. You've been standing on the sidelines. <laughs> you know, you're cold. Your feet are freezing. You know your your legs are, are are not stretched out anymore. I'm telling you, man, th- these these two games in particular. Because Alex, you put up the the um, numbers on the temperatures in Kansas City, and we know Chiefs are home. Dolphins are a warm weather team. They got to come and travel, and it's going to be balls cold. Pittsburgh and Buffalo, there is expected to be like a monster, massive. I don't know if it's two feet, three feet, ten feet. Uh, they're yeah. supposed to be a Dr. monster Seuss? snowstorm. A lot of snow. That's, yeah. Not cold, as cold, but a lot of snow. Oh, One wait. or two feet of snow projected on Saturday. Buffalo's but, new stadium has a roof on it. Does it, it really? Happen. I don't does, think it does. does. Oh, I'm not sure. I thought it did. Let uh, me go look up this rendering. I saw. No, Tennessee's oh, does, not Buffalo. That's and that's dumb. a day game too, so it's not as cold. Like that game's at one o'clock Eastern. Right, the Kansas City thing at night like that, dude, yeah. <laughs> is going mm. to seven, be bitter. Seven p.m. at night in Kansas City. Oof. Let me tell you something. You couldn't Oof. pay me to go to that game. Oh, you're and if, right. No, and no, if, no, if, no, if no, Westwood no. won, if Westwood won, called me and said, "Hey, we got this game. You got to go do this game." I'd be like, "No, I cannot do that." <laughs> because 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 honestly there was a game Baltimore no, at Denver that. and it was a day game and I was on the sideline of that game. And I, it was the coldest I'd ever been in my life. And it took me weeks to thaw out after that game. Mm. Tickets so look, have dropped significantly. Ticket prices have dropped significantly for this Kansas City. You imagine going to a playoff game for $38? Because that's what you can get a ticket for right now. Unbelievable. Because people don't want to go. Hey, um, this segment yeah, being you? brought to us by uh, our friends at Prize Picks. Yet again, I'm going to remind you. Fuck, don't sound so bad no more. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Prizepicks.com. <laughs> Peacock's like, yes. Friends. Yeah. Prizepicks.com slash great friends. You put in a hundred bucks, they'll match it. You, they'll match your first deposit a hundred percent up to a hundred dollars. We now have gone through like all of what we're doing with our picks. Now let's come back and do this. Let's go through every game. Let's make our selections. Let's see how we do. And uh, let's all make a couple bucks this weekend. This is Kaplan and crew. Stick around. We're in the seven mile casino studios. All right, great friends. Here we go. It's Friday afternoon. It's Kaplan and crew. Grande, the brown man, are in the house. We're in the Seven Mile Casino studios, sevenmilecasino.com. Um, I've already seen a lot of people today on our YouTube chat talking about our uh, new hoodies here. 
And uh, this one, the Kaplan and Crew hoodie is available for you. It is there on kaplanandcrew.com. Once Browner said, we are to sports talk what death row is to rap record labels. That was it, man. People went crazy. They said, that's awesome. Fat Tony made this logo. And uh, here we are. We're, we're, we're doing it, man. And I'll just say this. I, I spoke to Captain Troy yesterday from the Yacht America. And guys, I know we're going to have our yacht party. And people have been hitting me up like, hey, how do I get my invitation? Brother, first, I got to create the date. You know, I don't have the date yet. And I was thinking later in January. And then Fat Tony told me that he, it was his daughter's birthday and he was going to Disneyland that day. And that's not why I'm saying January 27th isn't the right day. But I will say this. That's also the day I mentioned yesterday that Ernie Hahn from the sports arena for all those years, his dad recently died and that's the day of his funeral. So I'm just trying to think to myself now, maybe what we do is we put this boat trip on just a little later uh, than we, we ever, ever really done it before. So we'll, we'll figure it out. Don't worry about it. We're, but I'll tell you this, when you get, when you get on the boat, it would be nice to see everybody representing. I'll tell you, you know, it'd be nice. I mean, if we invite 75 great friends to come on this boat trip with us, it'd be wonderful to see 75 people rocking some Kaplan and crew gear. That would be super cool. So, <clears throat> so we got, um, to figure that out because four weekends in a row, Grande's out of town. So we need to figure it out. Really? What, what are those four yeah. weekends? Are they during the play? Starting on the 27th, uh, I'll be in Oxnard for a day. Then on the fourth, though, that next weekend, I believe I or we are going to Las Vegas at some point. Yeah, but it's it's not the weekend. I think we're going to go to Las Vegas for like the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Are you going the full week? Maybe. Uh, and then also the next weekend, I'll be back in Oxnard. And then the weekend after that, I'm actually going to Phoenix for a spring training, not for like just for work, but like for pleasure. So bang, oh. bang, bang. bang when's bang, spring training? Bang. When's spring training starting? The 22nd of February is the first game, and I will be at the second Padres spring training game. And what, what's got Padres. you going out there? Oh, uh, you know, I don't remember if I told you guys last year we had like a bunch of my 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 guy friends. We get together once a year and do something. Mm -hmm. Last year we were here, Cinco de Mayo for Padres, Padres. Yeah. And this mm -hmm. year we have family. We have a buddy. A few buddies live in Phoenix, so we decided mm -hmm. to do spring training this year. I have actually no problem, by the way holding off on the Yacht America trip until late February. I mean, I really don't have a problem with waiting until after the Super Bowl. And because um, like right after the Super Bowl, right around my birthday, I generally um, take a weekend with my girlfriend. So I have no issue at all waiting till the end of February. Not not one problem. Now, if we could organize it between now and, and call it, you know, uh, January 27th, which is that Saturday, I would do it. But I feel like that January 27th Saturday is kind of a I feel like there's a lot going on that day. You know, so we'll figure anyway, we'll figure it out. We will. I, I, I have not wanted to be pushy with Captain Troy, given that his mom had just passed. You know what I'm saying? So, all right, <laughs> let's let's do this. Let's now, since we were talking about in the last segment, we were talking about the Dolphins and the Chiefs and what might be one of the coldest weather games in the history of the NFL. Going back to like Alex, maybe you put it up on the screen one more time. I mean, we all think about the Chargers and the Bengals back in 1992, um, known as the Freezer Bowl. The Ice Bowl was the Packers over the Cowboys. And just notice one thing about these um, games, that the Packers were at home and they won by four points. The Bengals were at home and they won by 20 points. Um, I guess what I'm saying is, is that um, those two games, I mean, bitter cold games, the home team won. Kansas City is a four and a half point favorite in that game. I really want to take Kansas City because of A, the weather, and B, the Dolphins are just beaten and battered on the defensive side of the football. So I'm really inclined to take Kansas City and lo load up. I, I don't want to let you pass it, even though I don't want to bring it up. But the only game on this list where the home team didn't win. Yeah, I know it. I see it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the Vikings. The, the Double bird to Blair Walsh. Thank you for right. that one. But, ah. but, and, and, and by the way, that game, Browner, to your point about dome stadiums, that game was played at the University of Minnesota Stadium where it was outdoor. bare balls cold outdoors. And Blair Walsh missed a 27 yard field goal in the last seconds for the Vikings. And by the way, destroyed his career. 
that guy was like on the verge of like, he's going to be a long-term, you know, 15, 16 year player in the NFL. That game blew his mind and he never recovered. And I think he lives up in Orange County now and um, has, you know, left the world of football. That feels not only the size of, of Blair Walsh and misery, but also the, that field being so frozen mm -hmm. and artificial also, at the time wasn't was it? also the site of yeah. Brett Favre's final concussion. Mm -hmm. Like he finished his career because he got concussed after one pass. And I don't remember who they were playing, but I remember he hit his head off. It, the field was legit an ice rink at that right. point. Right. And he slammed his head and he never played again on that field. I um, can't express to people enough how much of a detriment this is to the skill of the game. Old guys like this. This is good for talking points on TV. This creates nostalgia for back in the day, like the tuck rule game. And all these, uh, all the ice bowl, the freezer bowl, the fog bowl, like anything with a bowl and weather involved, revisits yeah. nostalgia of old school football. These guys are different. The game is so much now based on skill than it is toughness. Like toughness mm -hmm. is still a layer of football, and it always will be due to the nature of the sport. But it's far more based in skill now than it has ever been. We don't need these games. Where there's three feet of snow shoveled off on the side of the field, where and then it starts snowing during the game, you can't even see the lines. Like we don't know more of this. No, please, please, no more. Hey, I don't know. What, what, no I don't know what your what your answer is. I mean, if the Buffalo Bills earn a home playoff game and they play in an outdoor stadium and they think their advantage is playing in that sort of weather, then you know what what's the answer? You know, what should Kansas City and Miami not play in Kansas City? No, should, I'm should they be at neutral sites? This is these are this is a multi billion dollar business per team build a if you have a stadium above the sun belt that you don't have a roof on it build a new stadium everybody by the, chip in by the <laughs> way by the way you know people are talking about how greedy the nfl is because they put a play, they put a playoff game on peacock don't put it past them if eventually not only is the super bowl at a neutral site but if the conference championships are in neutral sites and they start really 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 trying to get greedy so when you say yeah. what do you want to do play at a neutral site no that's the one league i wouldn't put it past to be honest yeah. me neither yeah. me I know, neither uh, i have charles barkley was and doing as someone an with no team in san diego go yeah. for it i don't yeah, care bring it bring right. it here sponsored uh, by tostitos <laughs> sponsored by direct tv Spon yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah don't be shocked yeah, yeah the don't afc the afc championship being played in phoenix the the nfc championship yeah. being played in new orleans I mean, yeah i could yep. see it i I, I could absolutely see Houston. it everywhere yeah. all right let me do this whoever has a dome you get one whoever's got a dome you win all right, let, let's go through the games here, guys, um, because now, now it's time to pick all of these games. Alex, before we do, put up on the screen. Let's take a look for everybody, how we've done, documented as the season has gone on. Fully, fully documented as the season has gone on. Here's what our picks look like. Look Grande, had a, Grande, you had a great year. I know. You did. You I know. Did. You really did. I, like, I really had like three rough season picks there. In, the in a middle. row, though. In, in a, a row. row, and and then everybody started doing victory laps around me, but I came back. I reeled it in, finished thirty five twenty and three. Uh, Scott, you missed the most picks, uh, most weeks because you know you take vacations. It is what it is. Twenty five mm -hmm. twenty three and three. Mm -hmm. Browner finished. He started terrible and turned it. I around. was the worst, bro. Yeah, twenty nine twenty three and three. So everybody here, if you listen to us. You would have made money. You next would year, to me, you would have made a lot of money. Next year, I, I think wonder what my picks would be picks. if I didn't bet the Bears games. <laughs> I wonder what percentage well, would be. It would be a lot. I wonder. Problem. I wonder because Scott, you were so high on the Browns, they yeah. won you most of your picks. Yeah, they really did. I uh, next year think we should start selling your picks, Alex. And then oh. that see, here's my thing. Then it goes wrong. As soon as I wrong. put money on anything, I always wrong. lose. <laughs> my my MGM account in Vegas is really sad right now. Every time I go, it is brutal, dude. All right. Well, let's let's see how we do for everybody. Hey, um, we're gonna make our picks right now. Our picks, as usual, presented by prize picks, prizepicks.com slash great friends, prizepicks.com slash great friends. They match your first deposit a hundred percent up to a hundred dollars. And if you've not yet played the game, this weekend would be the time to get in on prize picks, prizepicks.com. Slash great. So we're friends. picking the five weekend games real quick. Yeah, then? let's pick them all. Go ahead. Pick we'll we'll start off. I guess we're all going to pick Cleveland this time. We haven't picked them all year, but uh, the Browns are favored over the Texans Saturday at uh, what time is that game? 1 30. Mm -hmm. 
one and a half points. I have, oh. I have texted um, Lawhead and said, "Hey, are we watching the game this weekend?" Because you didn't do that no more, man. Well, I, I will, I will watch <laughs> the game with Lawhead. I won't watch it with my girlfriend in Lawhead. She can't be around. Oh, okay. And okay. I also will say this: I'm hoping that there's no Texans fans because it could turn into a fight because he's that demonstrative during a game. I actually invited, not a lot of Texans fans. I invited Alex. Did he want to watch the game with us tomorrow? He said no. He's working. Browner, you would be very much invited to come watch the game with us if you're if you're around tomorrow. Where is it? How can we get a live stream going? Can you just prop up a tripod and and just let just live stream Jason? You know what? It's a great idea that I should actually do a YouTube live with Lawhead watching the game. You know what how time people, is the game? One thirty. One thirty. Yeah. I could come out there take my kids back. All right. All right. Let's think about it. Okay. All let's right. do this. All right. So, so go ahead, Alex. Cleveland, one and a half numbers. point favorites uh, game in, in Houston, obviously. So, yeah. I, I, I'll go first. I don't, I think Houston's going to win the game. So, I'll, oh. if you give me one and a half points, I'll take that. Thank you. Oh. What makes you think Houston's going to win the game? I'm curious. God, I think I CJ, I, I, I just think that I am a believer in CJ Stroud. Mm -hmm. When he's healthy, he has been amazing. And they are, besides Tank Dell, Nico Collins, Noah Brown, like they are healthy again. Dalton Schultz is back. I like Houston getting healthy at the right time. I, I'm just sorry, dude. I, I think that it was a great run for the Browns, but come on. Really? You're going to go in a playoff game with Joe Flacco right now? I just don't see it. Wow. Is I mean, Tank Dale playing? It, Tank Dale's not available. I said at Tank Dale's out. I said besides Tank okay. Dale, Nico okay, Collins, okay. Noah Brown. Dalton you, Schultz. The, the way you say it about Joe Flacco is if he hasn't had this magical run. I mean, you, Hey, you're going to win a game with Joe Flacco. Hey, Joe Flacco is a Super Bowl MVP. Joe Flacco is a, a veteran guy. He beat the Jaguars. Hey, he beat the listen. bears. He beat the jets. No, thanks. The, the bears were so the bears had some of the best defense in the second half of the, of, of the season, but that's well, not, CP. there's no here there. Is that, are those the only three wins he had? Oh, Houston without CJ Stroud. That don't count. Okay. All right. Well, I'm of course, you <laughs> I'm know, like, I'm, I'm going to ride and die. I'm going to ride and die with my Browns. As right. I have all year long, I'll take the Browns to cover the point and a half. Of course, it makes me nervous as hell. <laughs> just the same way you talk about your Vikings, how it just never seems to go right. The way the Chargers never, you know, they always find a way to screw things up. The Browns have traditionally been an organization like that. This year's a little different, I think. Um, their head coach is, you know, probably going to be the coach of the year. Their defensive coordinator was assistant coach of the year. Um, I'm too emotionally invested in this team to not be picking the Browns. I'm rooting for the Browns, so I'm picking the Browns. I'll take the Browns. I'll give the point and a half, and I will pray like hell that they win this game. This is very easy to me. The Browns. The Browns. The defense is, the defense is better than the, than the Texans' defense. And their offense, once they install Joe Flacco, who does throw interceptions, but he throws for lots of yards. So I think the Browns are going to win this game. I think the Browns are going to win this game by a touchdown. I know Vegas thinks it'll be close, but you can't. A rookie in a playoff game is very unpredictable. So give me the Browns. Give me give me the coolness of the quarterback who came off the couch and about to take that thing to the Super Bowl. All right. I hope you're right. All right. I'll take the Browns too. All right, Alex, what's the next game you want to pick? Yeah, well, I'm just going to go in order. So Do next it. game, uh, the whatever, whatever nickname it's going to get, it's Chiefs at home versus the Dolphins. Spread is Chiefs minus four. So I'll start. I'm going to take the Chiefs. I'm going to I'm going to give the points uh, on a couple of thoughts. Number one, I, I've, I think we spent enough time here today talking about the weather and how it you know benefits the team that's home. Number one, that two um, you know lives in this, practices in this. The, the the Dolphins can't simulate the cold. They can simulate the noise if it were going to be warm and sunny and and noisy, but they can't simulate the cold. So. Um, also, the, the health of the Dolphins, the, the number of defensive players, pass rushers that are um, are not going to be available for the Dolphins at home. I know it's been a rough season for the Chiefs at home in the weather. Given the Dolphins injuries, I'll take the Chiefs and I'll lay the four points. I'm taking the Chiefs. It's going to be too cold. That's it. That's it. It's going to be too cold for Miami. Like. And by the way, Miami has been frauding on the back end of the season against good teams. There and now, in go. addition, and in there addition, you, you add to that the temperature. So the quit will be, the quit will be strong with them come second quarter if things ain't going well. Mm -hmm. I just like to run 
through you besides Dallas, and we all know that that was the fraud bowl. Mm-hmm. Besides Dallas, this is who the Miami Dolphins have beaten this year. You tell me how impressed you are. Chargers, Patriots, Broncos, Giants, Panthers, Patriots, Raiders, Jets, Commanders, Jets, Cowboys. Mm. You know who they lost to? The Bills, the Chiefs, the Titans, the Ravens, and the Bills. Even if this was a chill, warm, random day in Kansas City, I'm still taking Kansas City minus yeah. four. Yeah. I just don't think the Dolphins are very good. Mm-hmm. Mm. All right, let's keep going. All right. All right, uh, Sunday, 10 a.m., another cold weather game. Buffalo is nine and a half point favorites over the Pittsburgh Steelers. Mason Rudolph starting, TJ Watt out, yeah. if you didn't know that yet. Yeah, um, I I feel, though, like I'm going to take the Steelers to cover. What? To cover, not to win, but just to cover. I think that the the weather it negate, is negated because these are two cold weather teams. Um. Mason Rudolph and the Steelers have won three straight games. I feel like guys, you know, will play for Tomlin. They always do. Um, I I think Josh Allen, even though without without TJ Watt putting pressure on him, he, he could he's still prone to a mistake. So look, I think Buffalo wins the game. I think Buffalo wins the game by seven points. I'm going to take the Steelers to cover. So that's my play right there. I'm taking Buffalo. I think this will be the ugliest game of the week. I just think that the, not having T.J. Watt is massive in that game. It is. So to me, that that's all I needed to see when he got hurt. That their season, their playoff hopes were basically went out with that leg. So mm-hmm. give me, give me the Bills. And Josh Allen has been fantastic to end the season. So give me the Bills. Okay. Yeah, I'll take the Steelers to cover as well. Uh, I just that's just a lot of points. It's like the Bills are like the Chargers. You just don't give them that many points. They'll win, but I just don't see them winning by double digits. So, do you trust Mason Rudolph in a playoff situation? As much as I trust Joe Flacco. Well, how about how would you trust Kenny Pickett more? No, no that's even less. You, come on, bro. You know that's what I'm saying. Well, that, that, but that's my point. Is I, I would I think I actually would trust Mason Rudolph more than Kenny Pickett. I think they've made the right decision. All right, let's keep going. Don't uh, next Kenny game, that. one thirty. This is uh, to me. This is one of the best games of the weekend. I just. Uh, Cowboys are seven point favorites over the Green Bay Packers games at 1 30 on Sunday in Dallas. I'll go first. Uh, I have the Packers winning. Mm-hmm. I just think they're playing their best ball. And I, like I said it on Monday, this isn't a new thing. The Cowboys and the Bills are the two worst two seeds I've ever seen in the NFL. They are, they are not two seed material caliber teams. That just could be because the whole league is kind of weird this year. But I think the Packers went out right. I don't want them to. I just think they do. I I think the Cowboys win this game because their defense will be better than the Packers' defense. I don't think there's anything special about the Cowboys. I think Dak Prescott and Jordan Love will play each other to a tie. It'll be a wash. And I think the difference will be Micah Parsons. I really do believe that. I think CeeDee Lamb's going to have a great game. I think the I think the Packers' unknown name wide receivers are going to be solid. But I think at the end of the day, the pass rush – for the Dallas Cowboys will be what makes them victorious in this game. All right, we so better hurry up seven? here. Yeah, we better hurry up here. You're going to no take matter. the Cowboys? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm also going to take the Cowboys. I don't love the game. I, I will not play the game, by the way, um, because I don't like the spread. I, I I think it's just it's too many points. I, I, I think Dallas wins the game. There's so much pressure on Dak Prescott. There's so much pressure on Mike McCarthy, but they are home. They've won every game at home all season long. And I just think that a rookie quarterback in his first playoff game but he's on not the a road, rookie. Well, it's his first year as a starter. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and take Dallas. I'm gonna say Dallas to cover. And um I don't love it. I do yeah. not love it, but All I'm gonna right, take Dallas to cover. And by the way, I think Dallas wins the game. Last game uh, is probably the best game here locally. Uh the, the Lions are three point favorites over the Rams, five o'clock NBC Sunday night. Mm, give me the Rams. I'll make it quick. Y'all go. Alex? I, too. Uh, I don't know if the Rams win. I do like – I'll take the three points, though. I'll, yeah. I'll give you that. I don't know who's going to win. It's a toss-up to me. Yeah, it is to me as well. Um, but, again, you know, a Super Bowl champion quarterback, a Super Bowl champion head coach, um, and a team that, you know, caught fire at the right time, and the pressure on the Lions of being at home and their first playoff game in 30-plus years. But I will just say this. We've talked a lot today about the weather – in the two outdoor venues and um, this game right here, outdoors, um, 
could it would change things. But indoors, to me, this is a shootout of a game. I, in fact, I would play the over under. Do you know what the over under is on this? I know we we play lines, but you one and a half. You see, I would play the over. I, I'd play the over in this game. Um, that and that's probably how I'll play it. But I will take the Rams because that's I'm 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 not like passionately rooting for the Rams. And if the and if the Lions won, I'd be like, this is a great story. Yeah. But I'd like, like to see the Rams win. I feel like the three of us can come back here with a push on Monday. Yeah, like, right. I see the Lions winning by a field goal, no problem. You know what yeah. I mean? Like that doesn't wouldn't surprise me. All right, listen, let me do this for all of our radio listeners. Um, we're going on now to the LA Football Network on 1090. For everybody that is a podcast viewer and listener, we've got the uncensored portion of the podcast coming your way next. Have a great weekend. Good luck. We'll see you guys on Monday, 1090 listeners. All right, everybody. It's Friday afternoon. That's going to do it for the week, man. We are we are done. You know, um, I know everybody busted my freaking balls over here for last week being the first week of the new year, and most people went back to work on January second, and uh, everybody's like, "Oh man, Scott's not back. Oh, it was a fucking hobby for you, man." Um, no, I was working. I just wasn't on the air that week. All right. But uh, we're back. Uh, this was our first week back together for the start of the new year. And uh, it was a good good week, man. Good week. And uh, Browner, I end the week strong with my with my brand new Kaplan and Crew hoodie, man. I freaking love this hoodie. Love it, man. Shout out. Shout out. Be independent. Be strong. Do right. Don't do wrong. That's all I got for y'all. Yeah. I sound like yeah. a Mary J. Blige lyric. It might be. Yeah, it just be. sounded like it just that's all the face that came to mind when you said it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm with that. Yeah. I was you know, we talk a lot about a random I shit on this it. show. We yeah. talk a lot about a lot of random shit. I didn't ever anticipate us talking about love languages. Yeah. That, a, yeah. that came out of left field. It really it did. did. It did. It did. I that was like a that was like a streaker in the middle of the Super Bowl. Like, whoa. whoa, <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Put that away, bro. <laughs> We're going here now. Okay. But then you start cheering once they can catch him. Right. And then like you just want to keep going. Cause then right. like we all we all have dealt with this, right. you know. We were we're dealing with this. I hate that fucking book. I hate that. I've book. never read that book. I've never don't. read it. I've never read it. But I but you don't I have to don't well you, you know the only I would never have had exposure to it. Um, but my girlfriend, she told me this story that she had these um this this guy friend, and he oh. was involved with this woman, and um he really liked her. But um, they were like on the verge of kind of breaking up. It just wasn't working out. And Rachel said to this gentleman, she said, well, do you know what her love language is? And he said, "I, well, I what, what does that mean? What, what is the love language? And she said, well, there's this book about these five different love languages. And if you can tap into what her love language is, you'll give yourself a better opportunity to create a successful relationship. So she gave him the book. He read the book. He did exactly that. He kind of tapped into what is her love language. And I can tell you this right now. Those people got married. We were at their wedding and we happened to see them last night. And, um, you know, that's I, I would just say this. Um, a lot of times now I, I think about these things like what is what makes her happy, you know, is and I think acts of service, which is why I was talking about this in the opening segment. You know, changing the shower head, fixing the the treadmill, getting those those fire detectors, you know, replaced. I think those acts of service will make her very happy. Good we'll luck. Find, well, yeah, good luck is right. We'll good find luck. out. <laughs> we'll see if I can do Unless it. Unless until you fuck it up, <laughs> right? Just, exactly. And then it causes, and then it causes frustration, right? Then it's like. <laughs> It's like I go to put up the fire alarms and I can't even do it. And then she's like, fucking unbelievable. I got to go hire a handyman now because you're too much of a little bitch who can't fucking put up a fire alarm. Let me tell you something right now. You can be the master of all love languages. OK, you could be you could have the Thanos glove of all love languages. But if you broke and you got a little dick, it don't matter what language you speak. <laughs> By the way, do you see speaking of little dicks, just, you guys just make sure we are. Uh, you. Tell me no, you guys no. saw this video. Of I don't speak no love languages, but I got plenty of, you know what I'm saying? No, so what are that. you saying? Yeah, no, let him finish. What, what was you saying, Mr. Drinking? Did you guys see the video of the dude that jumped into the, the pond or whatever it's called at the back Bruh. pro shop? And, wait, 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 and no, his wait, dick wait, was wait. nowhere to be seen. No dick. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Hold on. I did not hear it. And then Browner, wait, a guy did what?
So a guy at one of the Bass Pro Shops that has, I don't know if they all have one, but there's like a, a lake in the fucking middle of the store or something, like a big right. fish tank, so, yeah. huge fucking fish tank. It looks like an aquarium. So this dude was drunk as fuck, and he jumped into this, the tank mm -hmm. uh, butt naked, right? And he's like hanging on to the glass where people can look into and see the fish. And where you would normally see a dick, a dick. there was there was no sign Nothing. of one. No dick, huh? Nothing. And then Dickless. he got and then he got arrested. And when they were dragging <laughs> him out, and you see the video of him being dragged out, still no sign of dick. Balls tiny, but there. Dick <laughs> nowhere to be seen. So and you, it was to the point where it was this, like, I don't care if you were in the Kansas City cold storm that they're about to have, but there naked. should be more dick. There right, should wait, still be more dick. How should I how should I look this shrink up? Should I look it up on Twitter? I saw or it on just bass, shrink it. Just bass. Well, let me look. Bass Pro Shop Streaker, maybe. Because I saw it in Shrinkage. Oh, here we the go. Shrinkage bass. was trending, and I was like, "Why the fuck is Shrinkage trending?" Uh, and I was like, go. "Oh God." Uh, here it is. Let's see here. Uh, okay, guy gets. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh my no, God. He, that. You know how you kept sending that that video around and that black guy with that big ass dick. This is the like complete polar opposite of that. I didn't send around a video. I sent around the pictures. The meme. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh my yeah. god, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude! Listen, I don't care how cold it is. There should be more dick. That's all I'm saying. And if <laughs> like if you're gonna if you're gonna do this, like oh how this? I, I don't know if this guy was blacked out, drunk, or whatever. But there's no way he did this, knowing what he's working with, that he did this on like what his going dick on was so movie? little, it looked like he had an any dude. Um, yeah. I, I mean, listen, I've been at the gym and seen dudes oh, come out oh, of the man. shower that have got like monster bushes, and like there's like you can barely even see what's you know like yo, you got a you got a dick in there or what, come man? On. You know, <laughs> but like this guy's this no. this guy right here is it this is a dickless motherfucker. Yeah. He got no dick. Yeah. I can't, obviously, I cannot and will not show it, but it's very easy to find. And, yeah. uh, well, I, I mean, it's not easy to find, <laughs> but the video is easy to find. <laughs> oh, Dude, we were having this conversation on a group that was like, listen, I don't know what this means about us, but we were just analyzing the fuck out that video one day. We're just like, listen, dude, how old is this it, video? Like a week? A week? Yeah. Wow. Listen, man, there are two times you can talk about another man's dick, okay? <laughs> when it is extremely super small or when it is extremely super big. Yeah. In between, you gay. That's it. That's it. I, you can I, do don't need, I don't need to go that far, but I, I agree with it's you. That me it, talking. It's, me it's talking. okay. It's okay it's not, to talk about a dick right. if it's like that small or re, like a baseball bat. Like, and yeah. Right. Like, those are the two <laughs> times you can yeah. have a conversation about another man's dick. <laughs> like, there was another that, video. Don't do it. There was another video because, you know, when guy threads are going, they're going, right? There was another video. It was like, look at the polar opposite end. And some dude sent a video of this black dude at a gym wearing white basketball shorts. And the thing was down to his shins. It was like, wow. <laughs> well, that was like, what do we up, do? <laughs> that was like it years ago uh, when Antonio Cromartie was drafted by the Chargers. They had on the front page of the Union Tribune sports section back then a big giant full photo of, of Cromartie running at the combine the yeah. and he was wearing like these bicycle shorts mm -hmm. and bro this mob man had a freaking full-on fruit salad going you know what i'm saying <laughs> i'm talking like giant apples <laughs> and monster bananas, bananas. <laughs> <laughs> i had this one buddy of mine in college and He's it like, works yeah you know, Got it, a lot of kids works, works like Clearly. a motherfucker <laughs> I, I had this one buddy of mine in college short skinny white jewish monster hog really Mon monster so you know like we were all so jealous we like yo whip it out let's see that shit you know so then the other day in my college uh my college buddies uh Football group teams, text, man y'all wow bro uh, in, my, in, my, in, my, in my college buddies group text um they sent a picture the other day like have you ever seen him as a baby and they sent a picture of this <laughs> little baby standing in a crib and the baby's standing there, and I'm like, what? Who has a picture of this guy as a baby? And I look and I look, oh, mm -hmm. and there's this baby's got this monster mm -hmm. hog, you mm -hmm. know? So, yeah. I remember, uh, didn't Chris Jones, it was Chris Jones, right? The Chiefs D tackle. He's the one that fell at the, at the combine and his junk went <laughs> flying out. out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he ran the 40 and he slipped after the 40. And you know, they wear these underwear now, right? These like compression shorts. And it like, he Rolled slid. Up. 
and the whole thing rolled down and it r- rolled out. <laughs> <laughs> Still got drafted. Oh, oh, that's great. And he's and he's an all pro. There you go. You know, guys, you go. guys, great. All right, listen. Welcome have to a, Uncensored, everybody. Yeah, have man. a great weekend, everybody. See ya. Um, hey, do us do us the favor. Or not see you, depending yeah. on how you know, big or small. Right. Do us the favor, man. You know, I mean, I promote products all day long. AG1, Seven Mile Casino, Tory Holistics. By the way, Tory Holistics this weekend, you got to get out, you know, and take advantage of Better Bud being our promo code. But like every single one of our products and our sponsors and our great friends, you know, support these folks. But bro, support the show, man. You know, Scott, get- you even know we got like Adidas now too. Adidas, hoodies, crewnecks. Mm-hmm. Champion. And champion. Yeah. Well, I wonder yeah. that's because the the company we work with. Company. Know, yeah. Somebody sent me a message yesterday. They're like, hook me up. I'm like, bro, it doesn't work like that. I don't have them sitting in my garage. Yeah. Like Email Browder, Fat I Tony. tried to do with it last time. You know? Hey, man. Hit up too. Hit up Fat and Tony. If, He'll hook you if up. You know, if you know somebody who runs a small business, man, don't ask them to hook you up. Go out your motherfucking pocket, okay? Get Amazon to hook you up. Get McDonald's <laughs> to hook you up, okay? Get Target yeah. to hook you up. Don't ask a motherfucker buzzing his ass running a small business to hook you the fuck up. Come out your pocket because those are the people who actually need your motherfucking help. I la- I felt so bad. Also, last night. Mary J. Blige, right? That was yeah, very, very. You said that too. Yeah, Maybe I know. I felt I, I felt bad last night. I was at the Belly Up last night, and I was watching this this band that I really like. And my girlfriend and I were there at this table, and we weren't Browner. You know the table, and I wasn't really mm-hmm. drinking, so I had a Coors Light. I had one beer, and my girlfriend had one cocktail. And so when the bill came, it was like twenty dollars and fifty cents, you know. And I felt bad for the cocktail waitress that she wasn't making any money off of our table. So I put $40 into the bill fold, you know, nice. and she comes mm-hmm. back with $19 and 50 cents in cash as, as my, you know, like, Hey, you know, you might want to leave a little tip. I'm like, girl, I, I gave it all to you. Cause I felt like you weren't making any money. We, we weren't drinking, but we were sitting here having a nice time. So, you know, yeah, mm-hmm. you take care of people, man. That's all. Does the belly up. Man. Take cards. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Why? What's up? Cash payment. Silent tip, silent tip before I get out of here. Pay all your servers in cash. That way it goes into their pockets. If you pay them with a car, it gets taxed. Well, if you can if you can pay your bill with a card and leave a cash tip, that's probably Correct. the best way to go. That's the best way. That's the way I go. I always keep cash for that specific reason. Yeah. All right. We got to go. We're out of here. We love you. We'll see you guys on Monday. Good luck playing these football games this weekend and make sure you you play on prize picks and uh, we are out.